out of the relegation zone for the first time since Boxing Day. Derby had won their previous three home games and they looked like they might do it again. Two chances falling to Dean Sturridge, that was the first of them. A little later on, another chance went begging and you began to feel it might not be Derby's day. By all accounts, it wasn't the most exciting of matches, not that Charlton will mind. Just past the hour mark, they took the lead through Andy Hunt. There was an element of luck, but Hunt made it in the end, just. Charlton could only really relax four minutes from time when Martin Pringle scored a second. A strong run from Pringle and a crisp finish. Pringle on loan from Benfica, it was his third goal in five starts. It's been a good week for Charlton. I was talking to Ray Arthur before the game and uh, saying that we've been in with a shout in most games we've played in and it's just gone the other way for us. And, uh, but if you keep working as hard as we do, then surely it's got a turn, and it's turned in the last three or four weeks, uh, three or four games. Uh, right. Had a busy day. He missed two early chances and got booked for this. But was it his elbow or the ball that hit Klaus Lundekvam in the face? Then, after 16 minutes, Steve Howey's back pass was intercepted by James Beattie, who rounded Shea Given, and Southampton were in front. Lundek Varm was back on his feet and was booked himself later for fouling Dietmar Hamann outside the box. Norberto Solano took the kick but hit the bar. Just before half-time, Southampton were awarded a penalty by referee Graham Pohl. Chris Marston on his debut put in the cross and Didier Domi was seen to pull back Egil Oschenstadt. With Letizier injured, Jason Dodd took the kick. It was his first goal this season. Howie had a bad day. He was lucky only to get a yellow card when he collided with Beatty. Gary Speed of Newcastle and Hassan Kachlul of Southampton were also booked in the ensuing arguments. With just four minutes of the game left, Newcastle increased the tension when they made it 2-1 through Haman. But Southampton held on for the last scrambling moments of the match. I thought the whole game was a bit, you know, scrappy. West Ham have a really terrible record at Liverpool. They haven't won there since 1963. Today they almost fell behind after 14 minutes when Phil Babb just failed to redirect Robbie Fowler's shot. West Ham's attempt to halt their dismal Anfield run wasn't helped by the unavailability of nine first-team players, nor were they helped when Vegard Hegem wrestled the ball from Scott Minto after 22 minutes and Robbie Fowler scored. Here we go again, Hammers fans. Or do we? Because two minutes later the roles were reversed as Hegem brought down Minto at the other end. Penalty, said referee Neil Barry. Could Frank Lampard score only West Ham's third goal at Anfield in 16 previous visits? 1-1. The Hammers' reshuffled side had Steve Lomas at wing-back trying to halt Steve McManaman's runs. So McManaman passed instead to Michael Owen, whose shot deflected off Rio Ferdinand. 2-1 to the home side. But there was lots more to come, including embarrassment for David James. Now, how did Mark Keller's corner squeeze in there? The Liverpool keeper was left bemused as the ball came through a mass of limbs on the line. Now, remember, West Ham haven't won here for 36 years, and Trevor Sinclair found himself ready to make history. But he couldn't do it. So, could Liverpool snatch it at the death instead? Phil Babb tried his luck, Shaka Hislop parried, and Owen, and then Riedler both missed. Still no win for the Hammers, but they'll be happy with a point. Everton arrived at Ellen Road in buoyant mood, having thumped Middlesbrough 5-0, but it was back to reality against Leeds, for whom Jimmy Floyd Hasselbank inevitably was involved. One of the best moments for Everton saw Don Hutchison break through, but his shot cleared the bar, 0-0 at half-time. Ten minutes into the second half, the deciding moment. Willem Corsten to Hasselbank, and Corsten, on loan from Vitesse Arnhem, finished nicely, perhaps moving a step closer to a permanent move with his first goal for Leeds. Now, Jimmy Floyd Hasselbank has scored 14 goals this season. It should, though, be 15. Alan Smith with the set-up. Oh, dear. If Leeds United fans were a little cross, they'll have been more than happy with Jimmy Floyd's next contribution. A goal-line clearance securing all three points. 
This was David O'Leary's verdict. I was delighted with the three points. Uh, I know we can play a lot better. My standards are much higher than uh, the performance there today. Um, a few of the conceded five at Everton in midweek. Today, with just two minutes and 20 seconds gone, they could have conceded another. But Maurizio Tarico's shot was cleared off the line by Steve Vickers. If Spurs are tired after all their recent games, they're not showing it. David Ginola's cross fell to Les Ferdinand, who scored. But it was disallowed for offside. Then Ramon Vega had a chance after Darren Anderton's free kick, but his header hit the post. In the second half, Robbie Stockdale broke down the right. His cross was destined for Mikael Beck's head, but Ian Walker palmed it over the bar. Spurs had another good chance when Ginola left Gascoigne and Stockdale behind him, but Chris Armstrong couldn't convert. But if you're watching Kevin Keegan, watch this. Brian Robson says Gazza's still worth coming and having a look at, and here's why. Trouble is, earlier he was booked for the 11th time this season and faces his third ban. Refs pick on him, said Robson afterwards. Ian Payne and Gary Richardson reporting there. Well, the top three all won today. Manchester United remain odds-on favourites for the title and stay four points clear of Chelsea. Arsenal stay third, six points ahead of Villa, who play Wimbledon tomorrow. Leeds were the only other side in the top half to win today. Nottingham Forest problems continue, of course. Their 16th defeat puts them 10 points adrift of the safety zone. They have just 12 games left. Southampton stay 19th, despite registering their sixth win. Coventry drop into the bottom three for the first time since October. And Blackburn also slipped a place today, while Charlton jumped to 16th with their third win in a row.